In this tutorial, we'll look at how to install Bootstrap with NPM. Okay, so I just have a simple HTML boilerplate here. I haven't included anything yet. It's just an empty page. And now we're gonna include N uh, Bootstrap by using NPM. So if you go to their homepage, they show you their latest version and they show you how to include it, well, in two ways. Most of the people, most of the time, you actually just wanna use the CDN links. It's a bit easier. However, sometimes you wanna customize it in the source code. For example, you wanna change the, the value for their primary color. In that case, you're gonna have to work with their source code. It's in SAS and we'll see how to do that. Um, and you would use, for example, NPM to install the bootstrap files. So that's what we're gonna do here. And to check whether everything is gonna work, I'm just gonna include one of their components, their accordion component. So then we can check if it's actually working. All right, so I'm just gonna copy their accordion for now. And I'm gonna paste it here in my body. I'm gonna hold Shift Alt F to format everything. And actually there's a bunch of HTML so I can also just collapse it. And I'm gonna save it and refresh. And this is what we have, right? So this is not styled right now because we haven't included Bootstrap yet. Bootstrap consists of both CSS and JavaScript and it's gonna need both of those to, to really look good and work, right? So I could do that with CDN links, but this time we're gonna do it with the NPM package manager. We're gonna install it this way. I'm gonna copy this command and let's see. Before we can start installing packages, we should, we should turn our project into a so-called NPM project. So I'm gonna click on terminal here I'm gonna click on new terminal and actually I'll, I already had one open. So what I'm gonna do here, initialize our project for NPM, right? So this is step one, NPM init. Now you can write this as gonna ask you a bunch of questions. You can just press tab or you can just say NPM init dash Y. It's gonna say yes to every option. This is a bit easier. So what this will do, it will create a package.json file. This is basically like an overview of all sorts of information about our uh, project here. Right, so it has a certain name, a certain version, um, and it's also gonna show the, the packages that our project depends upon, right? our, our dependencies. We're sort of creating, uh, we're sort of making our own project a package, an NPM package in a way. So that's a bit confusing always, I think, because we don't intend to publish our project to NPM, but still our project sort of becomes like an NPM package because everything is sort of like a package in the NPM world. That's just how it works. But now we want to install a, um, a package and that's actually going to be Bootstrap itself. So you can say in NPM install Bootstrap. Now, if you run it like this without the version number, it's just going to install the latest version, right? The problem with that is, let's say, you know, a year from now, Bootstrap gets some kind of major update or whatever and you're still using some old, maybe, you know, deprecated features, right? So your 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 project may be breaking. It's a bit safer to use a specific version, right? So we're gonna use this one, and this could be slightly different from you, right? It, it, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, it's about the idea here. Um, and as long as it's version five, it's probably gonna be the same anyway. Okay, now that could take a couple uh, seconds, and I'm gonna close the terminal here again for now. So when you do that, you're gonna see a couple of things. So we're gonna see here in the dependencies now that our, that our project depends on well, bootstrap and specifically this version. We also have a package lock.json file. This basically keeps track of um, version numbers. It's not really important for now, but what is important is that we now also have a node modules folder. And this is actually where NPM has installed the, the bootstrap files. So there's, there's gonna be a couple of things. So we have another package lock.json file. We can ignore this for now. And we have two, well, we basically have two main packages here. It's called, there's something called popper.js. This is actually something that Bootstrap uses uh, for like tool tips and drop downs. We can ignore that. It's just some JavaScript that Bootstrap needs to, to do certain things. It's, not, it's actually not important for the, for the accordion, but if you use like tool tips or drop downs, you need to include that. Okay, so then when you include, when you open up the Bootstrap folder, and let me actually make this a little bit bigger for you. So when you make, when you open this folder, you're gonna see a couple of things. So you're gonna see the dist folder this is the files that, that have been uh, completely optimized. So Bootstrap consists of both CSS and JavaScript, and these files in here have been completely optimized, right? So the Bootstrap, it has a bunch of different options. You can use um, a, a bundle that has been minified. This will already include popper.js as well. So that's what we're gonna use. Maybe you wanna use it in a slightly different way or slightly different variations. It's not really important for now. It also has um, the CSS file, Right, um, you could use one particular part of Bootstrap to minimize the 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 uh, the final output uh, size, but that's not really important for now. So th those are really the optimized files. It also has um, the source files, right? So for the for the styling, it's using SAS, and for the JavaScript, well, it's just it's just JavaScript, right? Here we're not really in usually you don't want to change the JavaScript. Usually you want to change the the SAS or like the, the the styling part. You want to customize the styling part by 
changing the source files or so or settings in the source code right so that's what we're gonna do um but before we start customizing anything let's just see if we can make this work now right because we've installed it now how do we now um, include Bootstrap in our project properly? Because we've only installed it now. Right? So remember, Bootstrap consists of both a CSS portion as well as a JavaScript portion. So let's start with the CSS. I can write link, and now it wants to know where um, where it can find um, a, a style sheet. Right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a source folder, and I'm going to put this index.html file in the source folder. This is a typical setup, and since Bootstrap is using SAS. We're going to use SAS here. We're going to call that main.scss and Bootstrap will show you how to do that. So you can go to the docs and it will show you, let's see, customize overview and it will show you how to include this in your project properly. Let's see, SAS. So here you can do two things. You can include all of Bootstrap or you can only include specific parts of Bootstrap. This is much more um, complicated, right? So you really need to know what you're doing if you do it that way. This is option A, include all of Bootstrap. It's gonna be a bit, you know, maybe a bit bigger in terms of file size, but um, that's okay for now. Okay, so here it says option A, include all of Bootstrap. So this file now is importing something from node modules, right? So it's gonna go, that we can actually follow the path. So it says it go, it's going up one folder, right? From the, it's in source, it's gonna up one folder into node modules, into Bootstrap, into SAS, and then there is a file called bootstrap.scss. And this is what this main file is, is importing. And this file in turn is importing all of this other stuff, right? So all these partials, it's, get all, it's getting all imported here. And this one is then the file that we're importing here, right? So all of Bootstrap now is being imported in this file, right? That we have in our source, right? And we can do other things here. So here we could say, for example, the primary color, we could overwrite one of those variables, right? So the primary color maybe should not be that, you know, maybe you're, you're familiar with Bootstrap, but it's like a blue color, right? Maybe it should become a red color, right? We can, we can write other SAS in here, but this will overwrite um, that primary variable um, from Bootstrap. You need to do it in this order. The order is maybe a bit strange. Maybe you think it should come after you import Bootstrap, but it should actually become uh, it should actually come before that. Because in Bootstrap, in the SAS files there, they're using something like default, which means that if if the variable has already been declared, it will use the declared value value, which is what we're doing here. Otherwise, it will use that that value that has been specified in here, right? So that's simply how they've done it, right? And this is just simple SAS code, where right? We could write, maybe we could add, you know, padding or let's say padding to the body, right? Just an example here, right? You could, you could add, you can add your own custom code. Okay, so this is still our HTML file. Uh, we could, we could try doing this, but this won't work, right? So if you give the browser an HTML file and you link to a SAS file, you're going to get an error because the browser does not understand SAS. It only understands .css files, right? So CSS files. If you try this, it won't work, right? You actually get an error or you get some error file not found. And actually we're getting this error because I actually changed the the, the folder here. So that's not, that's not what, uh, that's not because of this actually, never mind. Right, but you can see it's still not styled properly. And if we inspect here, we probably should see an error. And actually we don't. Okay, so we actually do see some kind of warning here. CSS cannot be loaded from unless they end in a CSS file extension. In any case, the browser will not understand SAS. So we need to compile this as it's called into a normal CSS file. And then we will link to that normal CSS file like we would usually do. So how do you compile a SAS file? Well, we could we could install a separate NPM package, uh, but a lot of people these days actually do it with an extension in Visual Studio Code. So if you open up the extensions and you just write SAS, um, you're gonna see a couple of options. So there is like an extension for SAS syntax. You don't need to do that. Now here it will, see some, here it will say something like live SAS compiler. And there's an older one has been deprecated but there's a new one here which is the, the the popular one right now and let's install this so when you install that you're gonna see something like watch sas whoops you're gonna see something like watch sas here at the bottom right so i can close this and now if you click on watch sas it will find the sas file and it will create a css file out of that so i'm gonna click on that and let's see what happens okay so now when that happens we get another file called it will just take the same name but it's gonna be a CSS file, right? So this is plain CSS, right? And we can link to that, right? Remember the browser understands CSS files. Now you may see something with like a map, source map, um, and you also may get like a console because this live ex this extension usually comes with a source map and a console. I'll show you how to get rid of that in a second. But if we do this and now refresh, now you can see 
that this has been styled, right? It's not working yet because there's we don't we haven't included the JavaScript portion yet. This is only the CSS portion, but we have now included the CSS portion, and we can also you know constrain the width a little bit to make it look better. So we can use one of Bootstrap's classes, the container class, put it in there, and now refresh. You can see it's working now, right? So the CSS is working because this this SAS file is importing all of that that stuff from bootstrap in the node modules folder and this file then gets compiled into the css file here and that's the file that we're linking to here right and it will automatically update right so whenever i make a change here it will automatically compile that into a css uh, file but we'll see more of that in a second so now we have included the this this is the hardest part because you have to compile the sas into css so now how do we include the javascript portion well, let's see the JavaScript portion of Bootstrap. We don't want to play with its source files. We only want the, the, the file that's meant for distribution. So you can go into this JS, and they have a couple of different options that you can use. The one that we want to use is this one because this one already includes Popper JS. So this is the only JavaScript that we have to uh, include. So as long as we can link to this, right? So um, let's also link to a script file. We can say script. Now with scripts, you have a source, and then we need to provide the path to that um, file. So let's see, that's, uh, let's see, we're here index.html, so we have to go up one folder, right, then into node modules, into bootstrap, and actually we already get these suggestions here, into bootstrap, let's see, and then into dist, and then into JS, and then we'll pick the bundle.minified version, because that one already has proper JS, right? So it's a bit of a long path name. Let me close this for a second so you can see it, right? So that's what I'm linking to now. And now when we go back and refresh, now let's see if it's working. It's working, right? So now I can click here and you can see that it's working. And by the way, the color of this is red here. And that's because we made the primary color red. If I undo this or comment it out and refresh here, it's actually blue. This is actually the default color for the primary. It's actually using the primary color for, for this stuff here, right? So you can see I can already override these variables. Now let's talk about how you can how you can get rid of that source map that you may be getting and also maybe that annoying output window that you're going to get whenever you make a change. So to get rid of the source map and actually both of them, what you can do is you can go to preferences and then you need to type the name of that extension, right? So it's called live SAS compiler. So it's called live SAS compiler. Uh, you don't have to write it out completely, but here you'll see the options that you have for that uh, extension. So let's see auto prefix. It can also add auto prefixes. We'll talk about it in a second. Compile on watch. Okay, let's see exclude. So it's not gonna it's not gonna compile all the SAS files in the node modules folder, right? So we have a bunch of SAS files here, but it's not uh, it's not gonna uh, compile that, which is indeed what we want. Meaning it should it should it should indeed not be compiling those. So here it will say something like generate map. So the default is true. So you can go into edit and just um, set it to false and save the file and then you don't get an annoying source map because usually you don't want source map a source map is for for example here maybe there's something wrong so i inspect here it's a bit slow for me because i'm recording a video so never mind but let's say you find some kind of problem but that's going to be in the css right you're gonna you're, you're gonna work with this with the output of the css here however you're coding in the sas right this is like your source code with the source map you can easily um map the issues from the CSS to your source code in SAS. However, I feel like most people don't even use the source map, so I always feel like it shouldn't be included by default, but a lot of extensions and packages and whatever, they do include it, so it's a bit annoying. Um, another up setting here that you may want to change is the show output window. So by default, it's set to information, so whenever it compiles, that's information, so it's going to pop up that output window. It's a bit annoying. Let's see. Did I just remove it? No. Okay, so here's show output window. I only want to show it, well, when there is an error, let's say. Then it should pop up. You can also say none, but I think error is actually a good one because you actually do want to see an error, right? Because it cannot compile it for some reason, then it will pop up, right? So this is a very uh, basic example. This index.html file has both the, the Bootstrap CSS and the Bootstrap JavaScript. Now what's going to happen is you're going to push it to production at some point, live on the internet. In that case, you do need to make sure, right? Because this is, this is not going to be a problem, probably because you're going to have static assets. So um, you're not going to forget about the CSS file because when you put it on a server and you're still linking to it this way, you need to make sure that you also have that main.css file on the server, right? And also the JavaScript, right? So this JavaScript file is now sort of hiding in this node modules folder. Um, but when you push it to production, you're still linking it to it this way. So you do need to make sure that it's available. 
right? And that's actually going to be tricky because usually you don't want to push any files to production from the node modules folder. Usually you want to ignore everything from the node modules folder. So maybe it's better to just take that file out of the node, node modules here. So we can say JS, let's see, the bundle.min. I'm just going to copy it here. And then um, I could just paste it here in the source, I guess. However, it's actually meant for distribution, but I'll just paste it in here for ease. So I'm just going to paste just so we have all these files together. And then we only have to link to it like this. The path becomes much easier. It's just it's in the same folder. So we can actually just write it like this, only the name, right? Um, and now when you push it to production, you only have to make sure that you also push the CSS file and this JavaScript file to production, right? So now let's see if it still works. If I refresh here, it's still working. The fact that we can click it and it opens up means the JavaScript is working because otherwise it wouldn't be able to handle that click event properly, right? Now let's say with CSS, when you push it to production, usually you want to you wanna add vendor prefixes as well to some CSS properties. That's, uh, that's again, something that you can do with the extension as well. So let's see, live SAS. Yeah, so here, auto prefix. Um, you can configure that in that way. Let's see what it's gonna do. Okay, so it's using browsers list, so you're gonna have to read up on that. Um, but that's an option here as well, right? Right, so that's, uh, that's this. this is an example of how to install Bootstrap with NPM. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.